everybody, welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we're gonna solve some logarithmic equations. So hopefully you're a little bit familiar with logarithms, you're a little bit familiar with their properties, and if you don't have the properties memorized, it may be helpful to pull up a little sheet with the properties because we're gonna use a few of them throughout this video. So, how do we solve a logarithmic equation? Well, this is the key. We can rewrite a logarithmic equation as an exponential equation. And this is how you'll solve almost all of these logarithmic equations is using this, rewriting it as an exponential. And this is how I remember it. I use these little arrows. I start with the base and I draw an arrow to whatever it equals, right? And I draw an arrow from that back to whatever's in the logarithm. And I say three to the fourth equals x. Three to the fourth equals x. I have now rewritten this logarithmic equation as an exponential equation. And now it's easy to solve. I can evaluate three to the fourth. And x is already solved for. Whatever three to the fourth is, once I evaluate that, I believe it's, let's see, 9, 27, 81. So x equals 81. That's pretty easy to solve for now that I've changed it from a logarithm to exponential. And that's how we'll solve pretty much all of these. So again, this little arrow trick is just what I used. That's how I learned it like five years ago. Whatever works for you. But I start here at the base and I go five to the second power equals x. And I kind of say it out loud as I do it. I don't know, it kind of helps me. Five to the second power equals x. And that means x equals 25. And again, all the examples will not be this simple. You'll almost always have to do some kind of algebra, some manipulating using your exponential properties, which we'll see in the next examples. But most of them come down to this idea. We're trying to get log of something equals something so we can use this little trick and turn it into an exponential that we can solve, right? All right, so I'm just gonna do a bunch of examples and explain everything I do step by step. This is the kind of video where I encourage you, by the way, to pause the video, try these on your own, and then press play if you wanna check your answer. So I'll go ahead and start. And again, I really don't have to do anything to this logarithm. I can just go straight into turning it into an exponential, right? So that means that three to the second power equals, and it's okay that this is two terms, right? This can be a whole expression, that's fine, as long as it's one logarithm, okay? So three to the second power equals three x minus two. Three to the second power equals three x minus two. So yeah, it has to be one logarithm and there, you don't want any constants or anything out in front being multiplied or divided. If there is something, you just bring it over. You just basically get rid of anything out front, so. Yeah, I'm gonna work this out. Let's see, three squared is nine. This is just a simple linear equation now. I can just add two to both sides. Add two to both sides, I'm left with three x equals 11. Now I just divide both sides by three. Solving for x, divide both sides by three, that gets x equals 11 over three. All right, now it's getting a little trickier because we're seeing more than one logarithm appear. We can still solve this, and we're actually going to learn a cool trick through this example. Let's really think about this. We have log base 5 of 2x plus 3 equals log base 5 of 3. Okay, so think about it. Log base 5 of something equals log base 5 of something. That means these somethings must be equal, right? Remember when we solved exponential equations, and we had, okay, well, if we have the same base on both sides, and we had some powers, we could set the powers equal to each other. It's the exact same case with logarithms. If we have log base b of something, I'll put x, I'll use x and y again, equals log with that same base b of some other thing, then that means that x must equal y. So this is true for exponential, and we can use this for logarithms as well. If you didn't notice that, you could have subtracted this over use logarithm properties to combine them, that would have worked as well. But this saves us a lot of time because we can just say, oh, okay, well, that means 3 equals 2x plus 3, right? This saves us a lot of time. 2x plus 3 equals 3. Subtract 3 from both sides, that means 2x equals 0, right? I just subtract 3 from both sides. That means x has to equal 0, okay? So this is a cool little trick, a cool little shortcut. If it's just given to you set up like this, then just go ahead and do it. Um, but yeah, if you notice that it's like this where you have log with some base of stuff equals log to that same base. They got to be the same base. Then you can set the stuff equal to each other. So, Okay, so this example is looking like a situation where I can use that same trick. We have the same base. The logarithms are on each side. They're just set up for me. But there's one thing. I had these constants out in front being multiplied, right? This two times log 
base 5x is messing me up. And then I have this three times. These are messing me up. So I need to use my log properties. I can bring this from out front up into the exponent, right? It's a factor. I can bring it up as an exponent. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I feel like that will help me out. Log base 5 of x squared, right? The 2 comes up into the exponent spot. That's not a 0. That's like a, a spot. <laughs> Didn't mean to confuse y'all there. So the 2 comes up, okay? Equals. The 3 does the same thing. Log base 5 of 4 cubed. And I can actually rewrite 4 cubed. Let's see, what do we got? 16, 64? 64. 64, so I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. Log base 5 of x squared. But if you notice, log base 5 of 64... I have this situation where I can say that x squared equals 64, right? Because I have the same base. Log of some base of stuff equals log of that same base of stuff. So that means the stuff must equal each other. I, I just use the word stuff because anything can be in there and you can still use this trick. So that's why I just say stuff because it doesn't matter what is in the log. You can still set it equal to each other as long as it looks like this. So x squared equals 64 in this case. We can square root both sides. Don't forget your plus or minus. X equals plus or minus 8. But there's one thing we have to consider, and it's a really good habit to get into. I probably should have been doing it on the last problems. But you'll mostly see this come up where you get two solutions for X, right? We have to consider the domain of a logarithmic function. What is the domain? Let me see if I can rewrite it somewhere up here. I'll write D for domain. So the domain of a logarithmic function is from zero, not including zero, all the way to infinity. So that means I need to take positive and negative eight and go back and plug this in for x and make sure both of these numbers work for the domain of a logarithmic function, right? And in this case, I could pretty quickly see that negative eight will not work, positive eight will, so I'm just gonna cross out the plus or minus and my solution is x equals positive eight. But it's a real good habit, especially it should, be obvious when you have two answers, that's what you need to do. But even with one answer, it's good to get in the habit of going and plugging it back in and just, you know, reassuring yourself, okay, this is a legit answer. All right, so this is a good example. The reason this is a good example is because we have these two logs, and we're in the habit of setting these equal to each other, so we can just get rid of the logs and say that this stuff equals each other. But now we have this constant out here, and this is really messing us up because... There's no way we can get log equals log as long as we have this constant. I can subtract 3 from both sides, but then I have a negative 3 over here, right? I can't just make that constant disappear. So now is when I have to use my logarithm properties. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these two logarithms into a single logarithm, and that will allow me to solve this uh, if I rewrite it as an exponential. But first I'll go ahead and combine these one step at a time. Log base 2. And since I have addition, what does this become? Multiplication, right? So inside my log base 2, I have x times x minus 2. And this equals 3. And I'm going to go ahead and distribute this x. It's going to be x squared minus 2x. So I'll rewrite it one more time. Log base 2, x squared minus 2x equals 3. Now what? Well, now I can just rewrite it as an exponential. 2 to the third power equals x squared minus 2x. So let's see if I have room down here. 2 to the third power equals x squared minus 2x. Okay, 2 to the third power is what? That's just 8. So I'm going to go ahead and start up here. I'm going to move to up here. I have 8 equals x squared minus 2x. Now, since this looks like a quadratic, I have a squared term. I need to get everything to one side, set it equal to zero, and factor or quadratic formula, some method to solve this, right? So I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides, subtract 8, and I'm left with 0 equals x squared minus 2x minus 8, okay? Now I'm going to try to factor this and solve. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to be negative 8 and add together to be negative 2. I know that the x's are going to be the leading terms of both these binomials. I know that since this is negative, it's going to be plus and minus. I think minus 4 plus 2 works. Minus 4 plus 2, and it's good to always check this answer. x squared plus 2x minus 4x, that gives me that minus 2x minus 8. Okay, we're good to go. So now what do I do? Well, this is still equal to 0, so that means I set each one of these equal to 0. x minus 4 equals 0. 
x plus 2 equals 0. And now I solve each one of these for x, okay? So by adding 4 to both sides, plus 4 plus 4, I get x equals positive 4. By subtracting 2 from both sides, I get x equals negative 2. So these are my two solutions for x, but what do I need to do? I need to go plug these back in and see if they both work. Plugging in 4, I get log base 2 of 4. That's good. Log base 2 of 4 minus 2, that's 2. That's fine. Okay, what about negative 2? Immediately I see it doesn't work, right? So I need to cross this out. So I have one solution for x, and that is x equals 4. All right, this example is very similar to the last example. I really encourage you to pause, try this on your own. So I'm going to go ahead and start. Again, we can't set these equal to each other on each side because this constant is messing us up. So I have to combine these. But before I can combine these, i got to get rid of this 2 out in front. I can't combine these with this 2 being multiplied. So I can use my properties of logarithms to bring this 2 up here as an exponent. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Log base 3 of x plus 4, x plus 4 squared minus log base 3 of 9 equals 2. Okay, so all I've done is I've rewrote, sorry about that, I brought this 2 from out front up here in the exponent using my logarithm properties. So now I can combine this, and since it's subtraction, I'm going to have what? Division inside my logarithm. I'm going to have log base 3 I'm going to go and write my big parentheses. Up top here, I have x plus 4, x plus 4 squared over 9 is at the bottom. 9 is at the bottom equals 2. Okay, now I got a single logarithm equals some constant. I can just go ahead and rewrite it as an exponential. 3 to the second power equals all that stuff, okay? 3 to the second power equals all that stuff. Let's see, x plus 4 squared over 9. What is 3 to the second power? That's just 9. So if I rewrite that as 9, I need to solve for x. I can multiply both sides by 9. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 9 multiplied both sides by 9. So since that's 9, 3 squared is 9. I have 9 times 9 is 81. These 9s cancel. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here, 81 equals, let's see, 81 equals x plus 4 squared. x plus 4 squared. Now I'm getting warmer to solving for x. I can tell this is going to end up being a quadratic where I'm going to have two solutions. I'm probably going to end up throwing out one of my solutions. So just keep that in mind as you're going. Be aware of what's happening. Trying to notice patterns. Okay, so I'm going to foil this out, or you can use the formula. But I'll go ahead and foil it. Since not everyone knows the a plus b, that formula. So let's see, I have x plus 4 times itself, right? x plus 4 times x plus 4, which gives me what? x squared plus 4x plus 4x. So that means 81 equals x squared plus 8x plus that last term plus 16. Cool. And that formula is a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. That's a little shortcut for anything a plus b squared. Okay, now I can subtract 81 from both sides because I want to get 0 on one side. That's how I solve a quadratic like this, right? So subtracting 81, what am I left with? 0 equals x squared plus 8x. Let's see, what is 16 minus 81? I believe that's minus 65. Yes, that looks correct. So now I'm going to try to factor this. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply together to be negative 65 and add together to be positive 8. I'm going to go and write my first two x's, x and x. It's going to be plus minus since this is a negative, right? Let's think, what are the factors of 65? Uh, let's see here. 13 and 5. I think that's going to work. Plus 13 minus 5. Yeah, that's going to work. Plus 13 minus 5. Yeah, that's going to work. If I fool this out, I get right back to where I was. So that means that what? I set each one of these equal to 0. And I'm running out of space a little bit here. So let's see. x plus 13 equals 0, which implies that x equals negative 13. Okay? And then what? x minus 5 equals 0 which implies that x equals 5. 
And again, I just subtracted 13 from both sides here and added five to both sides here, and that's how I got these answers. So by the way, just because there's a negative solution, that doesn't mean you throw it out automatically, right? You always plug it back in to make sure because there could be something added that makes it positive in the logarithm and a negative solution could still potentially work, you know? I, you'd always just gotta plug it back in and see. So five, that works. Negative 13 does not work. So I'm crossing out my negative 13 and my solution is X equals five. So hopefully this video helped. Leave any questions below in the comments. Hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed. If you still need more help, check out my channel. There may be some videos for you. And keep flexing those brain muscles and keep making those brain gains. See you next time.